Hello, this is Dave from PC Gamer, and I'm talking with Jacob Ridley, who's been playing around with the new AMD Radeon RX 6700 XT. Yep. So how I is it? You got right here. Uh, first impressions, really big. Like, surprisingly big. I know we'll probably talk about maybe more of the performance and specs of this card, but I just wanted to get that out of the way first. Is It's a chunky boy. Initially, you'd think two fans, they have the triple fan design for the, uh, the higher end cards, the 6800 XT and all that. Uh, and this is a dual fan card, but it's almost just as long. I have the 6900 XT in here, and I put them next to each other, and I was like, there's no way they're going to be the same. And they're just as long as each other. Cool. Right. So, so it's, it's, a, it's a big boy. Um, it's a but where, where, boy. Where, does this, where does this sort of like, where does this sit in its stack? Where, where, have they, where are they bringing this in? How much does it cost? So, yeah, $479. Um, and so that's just below, it's the cheapest of the RDNA 2 cards because that's just below the $579 um, required for the RX 6800. But key difference being the RX 6800 is the smallest version you can get the Navi 21 GPU, which is the same GPU within 6800, 6800 XT, 6900 XT. Um, this is the Navi 22 GPU, so much smaller. It's actually, this is the biggest version of that GPU you could get is in the uh, 6700 XT, which is a 40 CU, 2560 core um, chip. So yeah, something- so it has got a full chip in it then. Yeah, it's the full chip. We, we were kind of expecting there to be a 6700, which would have maybe a smaller configuration. That's kind of what AMD's MO has been in the past. You know, they've done the 5700 XT and then you have the 5700. They even had the special edition 5700 XT as well. So really they went with three cards back then. Um, and now we've just got the one coming out of the mid-range. So you can expect probably that there's going to be a cheaper version with the smaller cut down GPU because any Navi 22 GPU that doesn't go in this card or isn't capable of going in this card currently has nowhere to go. So there's bound to be something on the way. But um, Yeah, I think there's, right there's, now, been, there's been quite a lot of speculation about that as, as, to, as to what that means, whether it's just they can't they can't make enough so that they're just focusing on the, the more expensive one to, to make sure they can cover that or or that the seven nanometer yields from their Navi 21 design, 22 design is actually strong enough that they're not getting that many forked yeah. chips. Yeah, I, I, it, you'd kind of assume, I'd, I'd kind of lean maybe a little bit towards the latter in the sense of, I'm sure this is a very robust process now. Seven nanometer TSMC, they've been working on it for ages. They've had Ryzen chips on it, which they bought over for these graphics cards, which has obviously paid dividends with the power efficiency and everything. And um, I do think maybe they are just finding that they had just had a lot of, they could they could launch with somewhat decent numbers that they would consider for that. But I think that's a whole other topic we're going to have to get onto. Um, uh, yeah. But yeah, I think maybe there's got to be some decision behind it. Maybe it was a case of, you know, waiting and seeing if how they could develop further on where you know, they might have other technologies like super resolution down the line that might help a 6700 compete a bit more. Or, yeah, I think there's, um, I don't know if we're ever going to really divine how, what. No, we're probably, really we're probably not going to hear, not going to hear actual details about the yields and stuff like that. But it's kind of interesting though. So, I mean, the 6700 XT, that's, that's um, so you say 40 CUs, 256, 2560. Yeah, RDNA two cores. Basically, that's the same specification as the RX fifty seven hundred XT from the last generation. That was like a yeah. three nine nine dollar card. Yeah, so we they're they're, anal they're kind of analogs to each other in in a way, in a sense, when you get to the silicon. But the actual price difference is kind of where they they sit differently, and so the performance difference is massive. Like generation on generation, um, you know the the sixty seven hundred XT versus the fifty seven hundred XT. It's night and day. They are, they are completely different cards. They're, this is such a better perform than than that um, past generation card. But yeah, I think the the cost between them kind of doesn't make them exactly, you know. An it's not the same tier of card, I yeah, guess. Yeah, you, you're, you're spending more to get more. So um, we'll see. Probably like the three hundred ninety nine dollar card, how that fares against or if there is one, you know, how that fares against a 5700 XT is going to be the real battle here. Because comparing this and the 5700 XT is kind of like apples it's and oranges. Point, I guess. Yeah. But I think it, it is a testament to how far it's come, how far AMD has come in developing the RDNA architecture. Because from their first generation, you know, with the 5700 XT um, to this it is a huge leap for the same amount of silicon. Um, and there's a few things in there with this card that have made that possible. 
you know, you've got the Infinity Cache. So you've still got the smaller bus, which 192 bit bus is not big for a 12 gigabyte card, which we haven't spoken about the memory. It's 12 hmm. gigabytes, which is a lot. I think that's a, a real plus point of this card. Um, but 192 bit bus to access it is pretty small, really, by um, by modern standards. You know, you're looking at much bigger buses on the NVIDIA side. You're looking at 256 bit bus on the higher end RDNA 2 cards, which even then is kind of slim for, for what they're going for. Um, so yeah, you've got Infinity Cache to kind of bolster that along, which we spoke quite a lot about the reviews for the um, initial RDNA 2 cards. But with this so card... Just, so is that something that just like, that boosts, boosts the memory bandwidth? So so that sort of like, it's like a sticking plaster for the smaller memory bus. Yeah, I think, so AMD's engineers back with the launch of the other cards were saying they didn't want to put the bigger bus on there because that would essentially just sap power directly to it. And it would use a lot of power to have this much larger bus, bus that you needed. So in order to increase the effective bandwidth, they put the Infinity Cache on, which is just another kind of sub-layer of cache. It's 128 megabytes on the higher end cards, and this is 96 megabytes. So it's actually half the silicon in the Navi 22 GPU to the Navi 21 GPU, but you're getting more than half the Infinity Cache. Now, I would assume that's there's somewhere behind the, behind the scenes they've calculated what the hit rate needs to be for it to be effective to get the memory bandwidth they need. So for whatever reason, they've decided they need more than the half that you'd probably get if you just sliced that Navi 21 GPU in half. Um, and yeah, and that's what they're, they're hoping is the key to kind of getting the memory bandwidth somewhere where it's gonna, gonna make a difference, especially at higher resolution where you're probably gonna need it. Like you say, uh, the, the performance is like a testament of, of, of how much of a difference there is between RDNA and RDNA2. But I guess I guess part of the difference is like that, that huge jump in clock speeds between the two different Navi architectures, which is like, yeah. they're pretty, pretty incredible with the RDNA2 cards. Yeah. So. It's, it's from the, the leap in clock speeds is, is genuinely spectacular. You go back a generation, it's like you, you wouldn't see a, a clock speed 2.5 peak is what they're saying with this card. We actually saw in practice, which is similar to AMD's game clock, 2.4 gigahertz. Um, that's incredibly impressive. Uh, if you go back a couple of generations that you, it's impossible to have got a card that high without possibly a liquid nitrogen or like, like extreme overclocking. And uh, we're talking about it on this stock cooler, just running reference clock. Like every GPU they make will run up to like 2.4 gigahertz at load um, and 2.5 at peak, which is just, yeah, super impressive. It's probably a testament to that AMD Ryzen stuff, the seven nanometer process that we were just chatting about. You know, the fact that they've been working with this process for such a long time, they've been working across all these products, they've managed to really tweak it and fine tune it. Um, but also they've really- so, yeah, they brought in. They brought in their CPU guys, didn't they? They brought in the CPU guys yeah. from the Ryzen side to, to help them focus on getting getting that throughput up. Yeah, and there's a there's a lot of really really fine details that they've tweaked to get these like clock efficiency up and um, you know fine tune the power like um, the power efficiency of this card. But the the other thing they have done, which realistically is a big part of it, is they've they've obviously gone. We need this to be running at the absolute limit of what we can get it out and make sure everything runs at it, but get it to the absolute limit, um, just for straight performance, really. And this card is running at 230 watt TDP and under load is gonna be running, you know, it, it gets pretty close to an RX 6800, which has 50% more cores on it. So, you know, they are really pushing the power demands on this card. And it's it's not as you'd, you'd expect for 50% less silicon, you know, the power demands to have massively dropped. They, they haven't really. They, They've dropped a little, but that's about it. Um, and yeah, so I guess they've sw they swallowed up the rest of the power by by just boosting clocks as far as they can go. So performance, 1080p um, and 1440p to an extent. You know, this this card does deliver a really excellent performance. Um, 1080p, you can definitely expect like over 144 hertz, um, pretty consistently, even in like major AAA games. Which you know, I think so. If you when especially when gamers nowadays we're kind of targeting like a high refresh as opposed to just raw resolution it really depends how you fall on that but for the most part i think that 1440p 144 hertz is that's where i'm that's where i game at because i just you don't i don't want to go too far and then drop the, res, the refresh rate so i think that's for, the, for that kind of resolution and that refresh rate mix it's a really great card um 1440p you will probably have to drop it back a little bit to get those high refresh rates. Um, but, you know, I think 
1080p, 1440p, you know, you can pretty hardly trust that this card is going to get you like really decent performance in the latest games. And with 12 gigabytes of VRAM, not that we've seen it yet, but potentially that'll, you know, keep you gaming at a high refresh for years to come. But that's all up. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah. That's that's been that's been the uh, that's been the noises about high high uh, high capacity video cards for a, for a long while, and we're still yet to see the the real proof of that. I don't yeah. Know. So okay, so so price price wise, we're talking um, uh, four seven nine for for the reference reference cards, and obviously they're they're releasing the third party cards at the same time, which are obviously going to be far more um, current situation as well. Just means that pricing yeah. is. A, a totally movable fee, but nominally, this is essentially twenty dollars more, twenty dollars cheaper than the RTX thirty seventy. So, where does it stand in terms of performance? Yeah, so that's the key. That's the main battle for this card, really, because the price. It for whatever you, know, you can throw anything else around there, memory and all this sort of stuff. But realistically, the price is so close that it, it's almost a nominal price difference. If you're spending five hundred dollars on a graphics card, I really don't think the twenty dollars is going to make a huge difference. Not saying it won't for some people, but I I can't imagine a world where this card isn't priced the same, if not more, than many models of an RTX 3070, and vice versa. Um, just because, like, say, third party models and the fact that supplies really kind of messed up will mean that um, you know the, these cards are selling for way more than their MSRP, um, and that's kind of the grim reality we have to deal with. But also, just third party cards will come out which crack another hundred dollars on because they have a nice cooler and whatnot. Um, so yeah, when when you're comparing the two of them, uh, the 3070, um, basically throughout our benchmarking suite, with the I think the single exception of F1 2020 at 1080p, um, the, the 3070 is faster. Um, sometimes it's single digit percentage up to so one or two percent. Sometimes it's five percent. Um, sometimes it can be quite a bit more than that. Um, but when it's a lot more though, it is a 4K, and I think that's where. You know, previously I was saying 1080p and 1440p performance is, is uh, you know, decent. I think it's, it's a solid performer there. At 4K, it does seem to slip, um, and the, the gap between it and the 3070 does grow. Um, and for I don't know for whatever reason it is that it has less memory, but they it's using Infinity Cache to do it, um, as opposed to the 3070, that just has a bit more of the raw bandwidth, like we were saying with the, the bus widths. Um, but maybe it's something to just do with the silicon. Yeah, NVIDIA's Ampere architecture has tons of FP32 um, cores on it, which essentially just doubled all that. So maybe it's just a brute force kind of thing. Um, for whatever reason, 4K isn't really this card's target, but it's, it's not really kind of going, um, delivering above and beyond a 4K, which you might have otherwise expected from the memory capacity and the Infinity Cache. Okay, so it's, so it's, it's, it's a little bit off the pace. Then from from the RTX thirty seventy, that's kind of a that's a bit of a tough ask. Then I guess in in an ideal world where there are the option to buy either of these cards, that that doesn't that doesn't really bode well for for AMD in this in this sort of like price point. I yeah, guess. I think I, I, I'm kind of quite lenient to it in the sense of as I wrote in that review, just getting any graphics card, especially a brand new one um, in twenty twenty one, is such a big ask that I think. You know, if you are lucky enough to pick up this or a 3070, you know, that's fantastic. Like you, you've, you're coming away with a great car that's going to serve you well for a, for a long time. If you had the option and you had the option at MSRP um, between you know this reference design and say Nvidia's founders uh, founder edition, you, you'd probably go for the 3070 in that case. I think the the performance is there, so it's just quicker, and I think that's the the main thing. Just rasterized rendering is quicker. That alone, I think, is enough to make me want to go for the Nvidia card. You could also bring up the fact, you know, that NVIDIA does have the ray tracing um, acceleration advantage. It's AMD has ray tracing in this card, um, but it's sl it's very slow compared to even NVIDIA's lower tier cards. Um, and I just don't think it's really got the grunt. I don't think they've really finessed it as much as of NVIDIA. NVIDIA's had two generations of doing it, and it, it kind of shows up. At, you know, it shows in the performance how much of a leap they've made. How quickly do you think it's going to sell out? Well, I, think, uh, I guess by, by the by the time by the time this goes like out, well, like, they're all gone, aren't they? Essentially, yeah. That's I think that's the biggest shame of it as well because this is a a really solid MSRP card as well. Like specifically this design, I can't believe I'm saying it, but like a reference AMD cooler design is genuinely like the one that you kind of want. I think 
before the blower cards were like, I like the dent. This is me putting my hands up saying, I liked the dented. Hey, I like the dent. 5700 like XD. The dent as well. um, but blower cards, they tend to be cheaper and they tend to not be as, a, as effective. Um, you know, they're great for small form factor builds or whatever, but this is a really good build that they've put out. And it just goes to show because with the um, 6800, 6800 XT, 6900 XT, they had to bring this design back because of popular demand, essentially. They said, well, we're not making any more of those. And, um, you know, and everyone kind of was up in arms about it. And I think it's a testament to how good this cooler is. This card runs a little hotter than those, but overall, I do think like at MSRP, like, are you going to get a card that's as effective and, and you know, as good on thermals as this sp specific model? Um, probably not. And I think that's why it's a shame that they're going to sell out really quick because this is going to be in such an impossible find, I feel, after minutes after launch. Yeah. Oh, that's quite depressing talking about graphics cards, isn't it? We get, we live in this really weird, yeah. really weird world where we get to play with these new graphics cards and it's like, oh, this would be really good if you could buy it. Yeah, it kind of takes yeah. all, yeah. whenever you're writing about any of it, you, you're always in the back of your mind thinking, you know, there's, there has to be that little disclaimer that's kind of like, but you know, this isn't realistically what you're going to find for a while. Um, and that's not too enjoyable because like you say, these are really cool. The Ampere generation is really cool. The RDNA 2 architecture is really cool. We've got, there are loads of great CPUs. There's tons of great silicon from everyone. Um, and yeah. it's just sucks that you can't really, if you can get one piece of it, it sucks that it's hard to get all of it together and have it mesh the way it should be. Um, because realistically, you know, it's a, it's a huge boon to just PC gaming as a whole. Yeah. So, where, like, finally, so where, where next? Where next for AMD? So, we're, are we going to get a sixty-seven hundred? It's going to be a sixty-six hundred XT. Mm. It feels like yeah. um, a sixty-six hundred XT. I feel like might be the the card that I'd want them to really push hard on and have a lot of. Um, but I feel like that's the one we've heard the the least about. A sixty-seven hundred. Uh, I don't know how that again if it, the pricing is in line with this and it's you know is it going to be worse than a 3060 ti for just like a little less cash is that kind of where that's falling if that is i don't know how excited i am for that um but amd has a really good track record of delivering really good bang for your buck cards the lower down the the scale you go like the the more value oriented cards um so hopefully they can deliver something in large numbers and large quantities that is really good bang for your buck I'm very. At some point this year. Yeah, yeah I, I would cool, love guys. to see it. I'd love to see it. Please, AMD. Please, let's <laughs> do it. Cool. Okay. Well. Well. Thanks. Thanks for all that information, Jacob. I guess no Nvidia worries. wins this round. It's a good card, yeah. but just not quite good enough. Yeah. All right. Cool. Well. Well. Thanks for thanks for watching. Thanks for listening, and uh, we'll see you guys again.